After the release of my video on the stackable generator, I was inundated with multiple requests for the STL files. I had a few things I wanted to adjust and tweak before releasing them, which I've done now, so I'm releasing the files with this video. This video is intended to be a companion to the STL files and to serve as an assembly guide to the 3D printed version of my stackable generator design. It's meant to provide a more simplistic approach to building a small generator that an average person could assemble fairly easily. There are stronger, sturdier, and more efficient ways to build one of these types of systems as well. If you happen to own a CNC machine or have some machining experience, I'll touch on that briefly at the end of this video. I've had a great time designing and building this generator though, and I'd like to make it available for everyone regardless of their level of knowledge or skills. I'm open sourcing it and all of the STL files are available for free in the video description. I'll also include a list of the parts that I used. So feel free to build your own, or if you feel so inclined, design your own versions and make changes and improvements. If you do so though, pass the information on so that everyone can benefit from it. Before I get to the main assembly, let me lay out the parts I used, most of which are pretty straightforward. They include the rotors and the stators, which house the serpentine coils, the main housing or frame and spacers that keep everything lined up and held in place. I used two bearings in each of the outer frame pieces. You could probably get by with the pillow block bearings, but I wanted to reinforce the frame a bit and add some extra stability. The two flywheels are just two pound weights with two inch centers. I 3D printed adapters from two pieces that slid together and then screwed to a flange coupling connector. I used these same 8mm bore flange couplings throughout the assembly. The shaft that the rotors are connected to is 800mm by 8mm diameter, and the four frame rods are 500 by 8mm. Most of the parts in the assembly are held in place by 8mm bore lock collars. The magnetic wire I used is 23AWG. I picked up 10 pounds worth, which is enough to make 9 or more of the serpentine coils. What worked best for me in creating the serpentine coils was to cut a 59 inch string which I measured and marked 36 lines that were evenly spaced. 36 for the number of magnets that are on the rotors. Then I connected the ends together and screwed a couple of round pegs the length of the string to a 4x4. I then removed the string and spun the magnetic wire with the 4x4 connected to a lazy Susan turntable bearing I had lying around. The spool of magnetic wire I also placed on a bearing so that it would essentially unwind as I wound the coils. I did 100 rotations of the wire and then placed string back on the pegs with the wire and wrapped the electrical tape along the pre-marked lines around the magnetic wire. And by the way, an easier way to wrap the wire is to use a serpentine coil winder. I just take the two ends used for winding and screw them to a piece of wood on a turntable. I'll put a link in the video description in case you'd like to download the files to 3D print your own serpentine coil winder. Once you have the magnetic wire wrapped with evenly spaced pieces of electrical tape, it's extremely easy to bend it evenly back and forth in a zigzag pattern and then slip it right over the stator. I don't have an enclosure on the stator assembly because I may choose to remove the coil later if I rebuild the stators but you can glue them in place if you like, or pour resin sealant into the stator housing to keep them in place better. The magnets I used in the rotors are one half by one quarter inch N52 neodymium magnets. I picked them up from Magnets for Less. You're welcome to shop around and find the best price for you, but I'll put a link in the video description should you choose to pick them up where I did. Each of the rotors is oriented in the same way, so every north facing magnet is pointed directly at a south magnet on the next rotor and every south and north. That helps lock the rotors together, but also creates multiple axial flux rotors in a stacked formation, cutting the drag you get in standard iron core coils drastically. The rotors are connected to flange couplings with eight 32 one half inch screws. You'll have to decide how many rotors and stators you wish to connect to your generator should you choose to build one, but I intend to add another four stators and five rotors minimum to this design. To get the best functionality, place rotors on both sides of each stator. I ran out of magnets in my initial assembly, so I don't have it set up the way that it will be later. Also, the size of the generator you choose to build and what you're planning to connect to it may determine the length of the main shaft and the frame rods. I'm going to be connecting a gear system attached to a weight, so that's one of the factors that determine the length of the shaft that I selected. 
you could connect one to a wind turbine, water wheel, or even pedals. It just depends on what you're building. Personally, I enjoy watching people build and assemble things. So whether you're watching this because you plan to put your own generator together, or just for the fun of watching the assembly process, I hope you enjoy it just the same. I designed everything on the generator to fit together in a certain way, but you may also think of things as you watch this that may save you time or perhaps come up with your own improvements. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section or in video form if you build your own version. I'd love to hear from you either way. Okay, so on to the main assembly. Start out by sliding the rotor shaft into the bearing in one of the end caps of the frame. Then line up one of the flywheels so that there's a small gap between it and the bearing. That's just a guide to know where to tighten the bearing to the shaft. So once it's tightened in place, the flywheel can be removed until later. Next, slide the four frame rods through the holes on one of the stators and add two of the stator spacers on each rod. Slide eight five inch screws into the holes on one of the rotors, leaving the center holes open. Then slide the rotor onto the shaft with the screws pointed away from the end cap. Attach the first stator to the end cap. Once it's in place, attach the lock collars with the frame rods lined evenly to the face of the lock collars and tighten them in place. Slide four rotor spacers across the screws against the rotor. Then you can slide on the next rotor. I placed white paint in the same location on each rotor, so I would know the correct spot to slide them in place where the magnets line up correctly on each rotor. You can also use the white marks to get an accurate RPM rating later. Once that's in place, it's basically rinse and repeat. Add four spacers to the rotor, add four stator spacers. Then add the next stator, then the next rotor. Then repeat that step until all of your rotors and stators are attached. It's also easier to slide the frame rods forward so that there's less sliding to do with each stator until they're all connected, and then you can just slide them in one direction. Tighten the outer screws on the rotor firmly, but not overly tight so as to not warp the 3D printed rotors. Save the inner screws for later because you can't properly reach them with the end cap attached. <laughs> 
I slid another set of spacers on afterwards because I intend to add more stators later. Whether you do that or not though, add four lock collars and make sure everything is firmly in place and lined up properly before tightening them. Slide the other end cap across the rotor shaft and add four more lock collars to the frame rods before attaching the end cap. Line up the four lock collars on the other side of the end cap and tighten them evenly so that their faces line up at the very end of each rod. Then you can tighten the four inner lock collars flush to hold the end cap firmly in place. Give the rotor a quick spin, and if you lined everything upright, it should spin freely without any obstructions or anything catching on the rotor. To tighten the inner screws on the rotors, remove the end cap closest to the rotor and tighten the screws. Again, you want them firmly tight, but not overly tight, as you could warp the 3D printed rotors. Once that's done, reattach the end cap and tighten the bearing back to the rotor shaft. Then make sure you have the rotors lined up dead center between the stators and tighten the flange coupling of the front rotor to hold them in place. Another light spin confirms whether you have it aligned correctly. Then you can attach the flywheels. Make sure they are almost flush with the end caps with just a small space. If you move them further away, you could warp the shaft. I'm getting ready to test a belted gear drive system, so that's what I'm attaching here. The way it's set up, it's a 5 to 1 RPM increase from the larger belt gear to the smaller. Also, the smaller end cap is temporary. I have it attached to protect the main shaft until I set up the gear drive. I plan to share the files for that later, but I'm also still in the testing phase and working out which way I want the gear system to be set up. These are some of the different versions of the gears I've 3D printed and tested since I started on this project including the most recent addition on the end. I found that the standard gears tend to place a lot of stress over three or four of the gear pegs, which is why I'm experimenting with a belted gear, as it evenly distributes the stress over most of the gear instead. So depending on the variable of possible belt slippage, I believe this might be a much better way to go with 3D printed gears. It will certainly be quieter. The other gears tend to be a bit noisy, and I prefer a more smoother and quieter system. Here's the assemble generator. It's a much more precise version than what I featured in my previous video. I shared most of the wiring information in the previous video, so if you'd like to see how I wired the generator, check out my previous video. This one is intended to focus more on the assembly and to provide more detail on what parts I used in its construction. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, if you wanted to adapt the system and make it more efficient and more powerful, there are several things I'd suggest. Rotors that are 3D printed out of PLA tend to warp a bit, which you can see in the video. So I had to increase the gap between the rotors and coil assemblies to compensate for that. It's better to machine the parts to get a more precise fit or use a CNC machine. You could also increase the size of the magnets as a way of increasing the power output. The closer the coils are to the magnets, the more electricity the system will produce as well. For added stability, the rotor shaft size should be increased. You could also add heavier flywheels. A thicker wire gauge would provide more amperage. The rotor assembly should also be properly balanced. And I believe metal herringbone gears might work best if you're building a stackable gravity generator. One of the comments I received in my last video included a link that sent me to a video featuring a new type of wind generator system that the inventor claims can produce 400 watts from a circuit board coil. If he's correct, then you could stack several of these tightly together to create a more powerful generator. The link to the full video is in the video description. You could also just seal the coils in resin, the way many 
DIY wind generator coils are. So that covers the assembly and several suggestions on how you could take this stackable generator design to the next level. I am currently working on a belted gear system and more of the frame that will connect everything together. You may have noticed the flywheels are big enough in diameter that I currently have the generator seated on two pieces of wood as a temporary measure until I add the frame. Once I complete more of those next steps, I'll share a progress update. Till then, thanks for watching, and do great things.